You know, it's really too bad that more people in the United States don't know about sweet tamales. I mean, they're one of the great delicacies of Mexico. And what Lainey and I are going to show you how to make is this fabulous combination of cream cheese and guava paste as the filling for the sweet tamales. Now, if you've never tasted guava paste before, well, you can buy it in the Mexican grocery stores. Well, that sort of reminds me of a soft fruit leather, or maybe in a, a good grocery store you've come across something called membrillo or quince paste it's very closely related and actually the quince paste is a great substitution if you don't find the guava paste so Lenny's cutting that up the cream cheese is already cut up over there now a couple of hours ago I put some dried corn husk to soak they come dried in a package like that put them into a large bowl put hot tap water on them I always put a plate on top to keep them submerged and after a couple of hours they'll be soft and pliable and now on to making the batter now the first thing that i'm going to put into the mixer bowl is butter which may surprise you because a lot of tamales are made with either shortening or with lard but when you're making sweet tamales i think butter is the best choice and a lot of cooks in mexico agree with me and to that i'm going to add one and a third cups of sugar, a teaspoon and a half of baking powder, and a half a teaspoon of salt. This will help to bring out that sweetness beautifully. Now, all of that gets beaten together on a kind of medium speed until it's light and fluffy. Now, up to this point, we could be making a cake batter, but this is where all the things change because the most important ingredient in making tamales, obviously, is the masa, the corn masa, and you have two choices. I'm lucky enough to live near a beautiful tortilla factory that makes fresh ground, coarse masa for making tamales. But if you don't have that option, then you could buy the Masa Arena, but buy the one that's more coarsely ground, the one that says it's for making tamales. This will need to be reconstituted according to the directions on the package. When working with the fresh ground Masa, you simply add it a little bit at a time to the beaten butter mixture. Last ingredient is a half cup of milk, which I'm going to dribble into the batter while beating it. light and fluffy that is well it would even be lighter and fluffier and produce even tenderer tamales if you just refrigerate the batter for about an hour and then re-beat it adding an additional half cup of milk drain the corn husks that are soft and pliable now take a few of them and lay them into a steamer there's special steamers sold in Mexico, of course, for making tamales, but you can use practically any steamer for doing this process. A little bed of them there, and then take a nice corn husk. Now you want one that's going to be about five or six inches across at the widest part. Take a quarter of a cup of batter, spread it into a square that's about four inches across, leaving about a whole inch and a half at the widest end. You want to put in the ate and the cream cheese here, every other one to get a good distribution of flavor. Then pick up both sides like that to encase that ate. Then at the narrowest end, fold it in like that. Take a piece of corn husk, tear them into small strips that you can use to tie the tamales to hold that folded end up. And then place it into the vaporera, into the steamer with the open side up. Now 
once all of them are formed, you want to make sure that they're standing upright in your steamer. If they're not packed pretty tightly in there, then wad up some foil and accommodate that down in there to keep them all upright. Then take some of the remaining soaked corn husks and lay them over the top of the tamales to protect them from condensation. Put the top on it. Bring it to a boil. I usually do that over high heat. It'll take about an hour and 15 minutes for them to cook. Waiting is the hardest part. Ready for the unveiling? Yes. Okay. Mm. It smells so good. That's one of my favorite parts of tamale making. The corn husks smell. They smell so delicious in the kitchen. Okay. It's got a little uh, hot there. <laughs> Now, next time you're thinking about something great to have at a brunch, think about these tamales.